everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny. I'm here with Vander. And we're going to talk about Arcadia. And uh, if you like what you see today in this video, uh, please like and subscribe. And let us know what you think in the comments below. So Arcadia is a 5e book based on uh, Greek mythology and, and, and sort of tiny bit historical. Yep. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, um, what, what did you think? Yeah, in a world of mighty magic, it's hard to like make it purely history related because yeah. <laughs> you know a little bit of magic um i love that a lot um i it's very class and character centric which is like always up my wheelhouse um uh you got a very unique race uh, i mean mo a lot of new things coming out now that you play centaurs or minotaurs from uh, uh the unearth arcana stuff yeah um but uh, in this one, one of the really unique races you got to be was a harpy, which I think is just really fun. Yeah. Um, it's kind of Aarakocra like, uh, but not really. And it's different enough that you could have an Aarakocra and a harpy in your party, and both can be satisfied being different. Hmm. Um, but then when it gets down, when you get to character stuff, it's there. There's a lot of unique character classes. Um, we did, as we said before, there's some overlap with um, another one of our really awesome. Uh, PDFs that we got into, um, but a lot of the classes have some really unique features where um, working very closely with your party is super beneficial. Um, so they have a Circle of Beasts for the Druid, which is really great, uh, that I love, because um, in Circle of the Beasts, you, instead of getting the two beast shapes a day, you actually get the number equal to your modifier. So, you know, if you're someone like me who loves cert like Moon Druid, like, I love Moon Druid because you get so much versatility. Um, even if it's not like, you know, the best, the best class ever, but with, uh, Circle of the Beast, you can give away beast shapes. So if maybe you're better as a spellcaster, but you know, maybe your rogue is really low on health and you need to keep him in the fight, turn him into a wolf or something and make him a little more useful for a little while before, you know, it gets changed back. Um, was there anything that really stood out with you that you... Uh, I like the gladiator uh, path that is in the... Uh, in, if you choose monk, it could be a gladiator. I like the demigod also yep. aspect and sorcerer. Uh, what I, I like best, though, is not so much the class. Although the classes are great. Uh, it's the races. They do a good job incorporating uh, a lot of the classic D&D &D races into this world. Because uh, I think that's a problem because like dwarves, elves uh, don't exist in Greek mythology. Um and just, just just to clarify, uh, it's it's a lot like Greek mythology, but it's not the Greek mythology. You're not, never going to encounter Zeus and Hera and all of them. Um, probably for again for the same thing where the Greek mythology is very problematic. Yeah. Uh, but so they kind of reinvent the mythos, but it's almost the same thing where uh, Titans rule the world. They were horrible. They were they're actually pretty scary in this yeah. one. Like the, the, the Hydra is the is, Ma. Like <laughs> the names just yeah. Like they they they, they, see, they, they seem like incredible enemies to fight but the, the gods um imprisoned them and now humanity has a chance to rebuild itself and and create these great empires and a chance for the characters to search out and go for glory and treasure uh but i, I like how they incorporated they reinvented almost like the the elven uh, elven race and brought into the the, the, the uh, greek mythology uh same thing with the dwarves now you have volcano dwarves and field dwarves yes. um <laughs> they they tried their best to bring Drow in, and it's interesting how they did it. Um, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it, it really is hard to be a Drow uh, in this world. Um, but it makes sense because, they, they, again, they don't really exist in, in Greek mythos. Yeah. Um, and I do like they also touch a little bit to Egyptian mythology yes. as well. You know, there's, there's the hints about, you know, these lost civilizations and, and mummies and yeah. things like that. And then the, um, the, uh, oh, and that's, the Warlock class. Yes. Um, had some great little uh, capabilities, and even the artwork with it, and the artwork is great for this, um, gives you much more of an Egyptian vibe, which is really a nice little throw because you're going through classes, you're like, cool, Greek related, Greek related, Greek related. That's not quite there, but it's <laughs> it's really fun. Um, and in most un necromancy necromantic capabilities, like you normally see that in cleric or wizard, mm -hmm. it's hard to get it outside of there, even. Druid kind of with some of the newer um, the newer circle of the spores, but uh, the um, class which I have to double check the name real quick. I believe it's called the Skull King, uh, the Dead King, the mm. Warlock, the Dead King uh, patron, um, lets you uh, summon zombies and eventually summon some more powerful stuff. So if you're one of those necromantic people, maybe you want to do some multi classing, do some crazy stuff in there. 
Um, did you get to look a lot at the, uh, well, two, okay, I'll mention the two things that I also thought were really fun is they had um, ships, which with the Unearth Arcana um, release of more of the Waterborne battles, mm. it was nice that they gave details of the different yes. types of ships you could have. So, like, if you want to do Navy combat, you can do it. They also hint about uh, kind of like Atlantis. They don't say Atlantis. Yeah. But it had, they, they mentioned that, that the elves came from this great civilization out in the ocean yeah. and it's no longer there. There's actually a couple. Uh, <laughs> Sidetrack for 30 seconds. There's um, besides <laughs> Atlantis, there's a city called uh, uh, Lemuria, which was another, mm. supposed to be an underground, um, mm. not underground, another island underwater, that sunk. Yeah. And there's like two more that are super popular that I can't remember at the moment. So while Atlantis is the most popular, it could, there, there's a lot of yeah. potential there. So if you have ideas or have a world underwater that you want to add in, like... Yeah, they, they, they don't <laughs> name things per se, but they give you enough clue so that there's a foundation for your your, your dungeon mastering and players to start with yeah. so they they're very familiar with the world as it is so one of the other things and this is probably one of the stupidest things but i love <laughs> i love all the different weapons that even just like player's handbook that gives you as the options but a lot of them just aren't proficient enough for you so like you can't use you can't use a net gr really well um and then like even daggers eventually unless you're a rogue become useless because of their uh their power level mm. but there is a feat option called the slinger, which lets you use a sling more proficiently. And I just love the idea of, like, this is a little more David and Goliath than it is anything Greek-related, but just the idea of you becoming so proficient with a weapon that is the easiest. It is a piece of leather with some tie and a rock, and you're just learning, and eventually you get good at it. It gives you a lot of proficiency with that. There are some really unique feats in here that I'd recommend looking over, but that one stood out to me because it's like, they turned a useless weapon that, in the most part, is pretty useless... Um, it's kind of like the blow dart where like you can only use it well if you're using poison. <laughs> yeah. And I just like that they, they gave a little enough of a twist that if someone wants to use a sling and be weird and be a little different, you can do that now. Mm. I love character creation. So the rogue archetype uh, trickster um, <laughs> uh, specifically <laughs> lets you um, roll uh, your, it's called the faded uh, skill, and you become able to roll three d20s for advantage stuff. Mm. Um, but you are also able to give advantage to other people as their actions. It's, it's very much in this one, which I really liked, is um, besides a few outliers that have very, very unique skill sets, it's about if you are working with your team, you can help each other a lot. Um, the hoplite, or hoplite, I'm not sure which way, I think it's hoplite, um, you can give other people AC by yeah. being with you and part of a team. So very much that uh, phalanx thing that we're used to thinking with uh, those type of warriors. Like, you're there. If you have a shield, you're giving everyone plus two AC around you. And plus two AC, that's... without having to work for it, is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good That's a good bonus. Yeah. Um, the one thing about the book that, to me, would would have made it perfect if mm -hmm. they would have some sort of like a, a mini adventure at the back. Agreed. I mean, there is, they give you enough material of the world so you can't create it. And honestly, you, Greek mythology is familiar enough for everyone. With, I mean, even kids today with Percy Jackson and, and everything. So, that it, it, I mean, it's everywhere. So, it, it, it doesn't really need it, but I think it would have been helpful to have it just so to help new dungeon masters yeah. or even new players. Uh, like, if, if you want, like, that a little bit. Yeah, like, if we would have read the book now, like, hey, let's play something now. I, we have to, like, either take some time take and write a few minutes or if they had a venture in the back of this we could just play something right there, True, there. Which, which is nice uh, but I think also you know may, maybe not having I'm not saying it's part of their plan but you know not having it means maybe that you spend that little extra time developing your characters and then the, the DM is like okay cool you guys go do that for a week I'm gonna go create a whole adventure for you based around some uh, mythology I mean and there are I'm sure countless homebrew supplements that can definitely help you out with mm -hmm. that one but I mean Overall, like they give you the ability, like character wise, they give you plenty of options, uh, feats, weapons, uh, all the unique archetypes, and the races that uh, were super unique, especially like you said, the dwarven elf, uh, very unique compared to what we've seen before. Like, and just the volcano dwarves, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, th that was great. I like that a lot. I think that's my favorite race, honestly, because, um, and I like the fact they're exploring, making jewels, and they're not too much about war money, they just want to get treasure, yeah. Um, so I, I like how they were described and how it fits very well with the world uh, of, of this world or in Arcadia. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the only thing. That's only my little gripe. It's just the adventure. Yeah, but yeah, it, besides no, that, it, the, the art's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's very well organized. Um, it, each each class has a path that you can follow if you want to uh, enjoy the flavor of this world. Um, I, to my, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm glad to have read it. I'm glad yeah. that you introduced me to oh, it. Of course, <laughs> it just makes the 
everything more interesting. Yeah. Again, an archetype because I love archetypes. Uh, the path of the hero, um, hmm. uh, the barbarian path, and uh, unfortunately, barbarians are so always stuck with like work on three stats, and then everything else is gonna be blank um, unless you're very, very great at uh, home ruining or making your character original. The path of the hero. Um, really lets you use your strength in replace of some charisma skills. Mm -hmm. So intimidation uh, and persuasion, which makes sense, and even performance, which still makes sense. But um, you also get bonuses to your health that uh, as long as you have your health, uh, you sort of have this little bit of, not immortality, but resistance. So again, you, it brings that demigod status up to you where you're like, hey, as long as I'm feeling healthy, I am I am impervious to certain types, not impervious, but resistant to certain types of damages, which is, I think, a nice way. It's kind of having that like extra little meter in a video game where once that runs out, you're like, oh, well, this is now things just got a little more dangerous now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I enjoyed I enjoyed reading it, and all these characters had such good flavor. <laughs> now, if if you enjoy if if you enjoy Greek mythology and you think like, well, I want some more to go over Arcadia, there is another set of adventures called the uh, Odyssey of Dragon Lords, not by the same people. Uh, they have a, a player's guide and an adventure book, and uh, there is a lot of overlap with those two. Um, again, it's not made. It, two different companies made made uh, an, a five E RPG based on Greek mythology, and there is overlap there. They both have Gorgons as races, for example, um, and so forth. And if you check out our video for our review for that, and the way I view it is that like Greek and Roman mythology, because it's this very those are two are very, very similar, very similar. <laughs> and reading how that happened how the how the two mythologies come about is very interesting too but that's a different video yeah. um but yeah that, that's something else if you are interested if you're interested in, in uh, expanding uh this world you can have now it looks like you have two worlds yeah. that, to, to and play plus from. sailing plus you have ships so yes. now, now you have a way to go one to the other uh and then you have from there you have dragons <laughs> so you have, you have ways to get around um and also it, it, you can the nice thing about homebrews is that you can homebrew homebrews. So, you know, if you're looking at both of these books together, uh, for instance, they both have Amazon um, feeds for yes. rangers. If you look at both of them side by side, you can be like, well, what what flavor works for me? And, I mean, they're both great. And it, it give, even that, the Amazon class itself is really un a unique way to do rangers. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I recommend both, but I, there's nothing wrong with one or the other. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching, everyone, and... Um have a good day.